So we're here in Paraguay uh, with an IMA Helps volunteer. What is your name? Cindy Lioro. And where are you from? I live in Gaithersburg, Maryland. And what did you do on the IMA Helps mission to Itagua, Paraguay in 2017? Well, I, uh, my official position was uh, interpreter for this, the doctors, but I guess I did a little bit of everything wherever it was needed. Uh -huh. So um, I did a lot of running around, finding medications, finding patients, talking to their families. Um, I had to give some uh, information on the treatments they were to receive or post-operation uh, uh, yeah, post instructions for some of them. I was able to um, do the rounds with the, with the surgeons in the mornings in the hospitals to look after the, the patients and how they were doing after the surgeries. Mm -hmm. I was actually able to go into some of the surgeries, which I didn't think I could have done, and I did. I survived. I loved it, actually. Uh -huh. I found it very interesting. Um, so I, I got to do a little bit of everything during this trip. What was it that impressed you most about this medical mission? in terms of what you saw, the cases, the people that you met along the way. Was well, there anything particularly moving? There, there were a lot of cases with the patients. Um, I, I was impressed also by their dedication to come and, and, and try to get treatment from so far away. Um, many spend nights outside waiting to be seen. and it, it, was, it was just very emotional for me to see all they had to do. Uh, the, ca the cases all impressed me. We saw some horrible cases, uh, but I think one of the things that impressed me the most was just the the attitude of the mission members. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they came year after year, most of them, um, they're giving up their vacation, they're giving up their, you know, their free time. They they pay for their trips, and then they work practically 24-7 here. You know, they want to see every last patient that they can see. Mm -hmm. And they don't even come by themselves. They, they bring their wives, their sisters, their brothers, their cousins, their, their grandkids. It's, they're teaching the, um, the way of life, of serving others to their whole families. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very, very dedicated to, the, to this. And I saw so much patience and kindness and love mm -hmm. given to each patient. You know, not, nobody was rushed. Mm -hmm. Everybody was given some sort of hope or just talked to in a way that impressed me like, like I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. What was the case that moved you the most that you saw? <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say that there was one case. I, I was, the case that I was really sad about was one we couldn't help. Because uh -huh. uh, it was a young man who had, we, we helped so many young men with motorcycle accidents. There aren't materials here. That they have broken legs, broken bones, and they're easily fixed. Unfortunately, there aren't the materials to do it, and after t you know, a certain amount of time goes by, it gets harder to fix. And that's what we saw a lot of. But one particular young man, he had had surgery, and the, the pin was infected. Unfortunately, in order to, the surgery to fix it wasn't hard, but there weren't enough beds in the hospital. He would have to have stayed at least four to six weeks afterwards to I see. the intravenous antibiotics. I and see. So it was a limitation on the part of the local hospitals. It, it was. It was. We, we did have to turn. It, it's, I, this is the first time the mission came to Paraguay. Right. So I think it's a learning experience on both sides. Um, they didn't know what to expect or they were actually, I think, overwhelmed with how many people we treated. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what they had to offer. In terms of their capabilities. Yes. You know, even though you do these uh, missions beforehand to come and talk to them, I think when you get here, the reality can sometimes be different, too. Right. So it's, it's also a learning experience for next year to come back here. And, and we, you know, we know we saw certain cases that we could help if we brought this materials or you know, we've, we've gotten some of the names for next year. Right. So we could do surgeries that they're, they're, they're not capable of doing here. Because the, the doctors um, that I worked with were very much impressed with the skill of the surgeons here. Mm -hmm. You know, they said they were highly, highly capable. And um, that what they see is lack of materials. Is right. What, what were some of the most satisfying cases that you got to see? Oh, just, I, I think the hugs from the patients. Uh -huh. um, even the ones who couldn't help, you know, they would come. I, I got a lot of gifts from people who can't really afford to give you gifts. Uh -huh. They come back the next day from far away to bring me something they've made themselves. Uh -huh. You know, and, um, just the fact that they would do that, you know, they've, they've, 
asked for time out from their jobs. They've asked, they've been there for days. Uh, they've taken buses for hours to get to our place. That they would come back to give me something. You know? It's very moving. Very, very moving. Yeah. It, 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 was there any particular case that you were pleased to see, like of a particular patient who got a certain surgery handled or a certain situation handled? Yes. I mean, even though I didn't really work with them directly. Um, I, I was there when all the children came out, and I, 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 you know, I have a special heart for children, so uh -huh. um, just to see all of, they have deformities and, and they don't have a chance for having the kind of surgery here. So, you know, in a couple hours the surgeons fix them up and they change their lives forever. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of club feet, for example. You know, they, those kids may not even have a job in the future, and now they have that chance. Because they can walk now. Now they can walk. Right. Uh -huh. So that basically gives these children the ability to take care of themselves as they get older. Exactly. So, so it's not just a cosmetic benefit, but it's an economic benefit that we're providing it really is. for their whole lives, basically, their and, working and lives. Talking about the young men with motorcycle accidents, they could be back at work within a couple of weeks if they had the surgery right away. And, and it's so sad to see that they may be invalid. They may, this one particular one I told you about is probably going to lose his leg. Right. You know, so it's, it is sad that more cannot be done. And uh, from what we see here in the hospital, they, they try to help everybody, they just don't have also the capability to do it. Right, they don't have all the materials mm -hmm. they need. Yeah. What would you tell potential donors about IMA Helps in terms of how we use the donations we do receive? Do you think donors would be pleased? With Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't see any waste whatsoever. Um, we lacked many things. There was so much need that we were running out of our materials, in some cases very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have done more surgeries if we had more plates. But we, even things as, you know, the ACE bandages. We saw so many cases. I worked with a vascular surgeon, for example, and I had always heard of stripping veins. I always thought it was cosmetic or something. I had no idea what it could turn into. Uh, and we saw case after case of legs that were deformed and with lesions that were never healing because of the varicose veins. We, you know, we couldn't operate them and we could at least give them bandages to, and teach them how to put them on so they would help them that the lesions wouldn't keep progressing. Right. And, you know, give them that. And we ran out. There were so many cases. We just ran out. Mm -hmm. and the last day we were trying to find who had a bandage somewhere. So you... <laughs> Sounds like you felt that the IMA Helps team really made an impact on the lives of a lot of people here. It, it I, and I think both ways. I, I mean, I know there were many days I cried a lot because we couldn't help people. There were so many people we couldn't help, but there were so many people we did help. When I heard the final figures, I, I, I was impressed, even though I was expecting them to be uh, large because we saw thousands of patients. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, we only had six surgeons, I think we did something like 174 around that number. I'm not sure of the final number, but you know, in seven days we did that many surgeries. So yes, we, we, we did change lives and then um, I think the mission changed our lives too. You, you can't come for something like this and go back the same. So. Very good, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>